Hey there everyone, happy weekend. Welcome to this week's weekly update. If you're joining me for this type of video for the very first time, these are kind of update videos full of bits and bobs of different categories. Sometimes I'll talk to you about beauty things I'm into, sometimes it'll be fashion items, new things I've bought, things I'm interested in, things I'm learning, or whatever that's happening in my life. It's a bit of a mumble jumbo life update when I don't have time to do a full-fledged, well-produced and well-edited video. But I do want to sit down and have the opportunity to catch up with you because I haven't done one in a little while. So I've got a whole bunch of things to show you actually. I want to get your opinion on a few things as well and I have some exciting um, new additions to my I guess filming setup that will help me film other videos in the future but we'll get to that in just a moment but this is your cue to grab a snack if you want a snack um, get some munchies get you know yourself some tea some milk tea some bubble tea I'm really into that um, right now since I've learned how to cook my own bubble tea pearls I've been all about it and just ever so slightly obsessed anyway Let's start off with talking about some beauty products and my hair. It's been about a month and a half since I colored my hair and oh, or possibly two months. Maybe we're pushing almost two months and I am still very happy with the color. On a regular basis, I still have not learned to style it well, uh, kind of for day to day on the weekdays. But today I did attempt to put in some kind of a wavy texture to it. I love how when I have my hair in a curl or when I have it in a wave or something, the color really emphasizes the texture and makes it just cool looking. So I'm super happy with my hair color even right now. And I thought, well, this could be the time to try out some high-end hair care. If you recall, a while back I did purchase a duo set shampoo and conditioner of the Alterna, I think it's moisturizing um, range and I tried a deluxe sample size originally and then I decided to go for the full size bottle during one of the VIB sales previously in the year or maybe it was the end of last year. So now I'm kind of exploring more of the high-end hair care territory especially because you know people say if you've got really well done hair. Hair care is one of those things that a lot of people do believe the more money that you pay for your hair care, the better it is for your hair. But I am going to test out that theory because for the most part, with the exception of a couple of things, for example, the Joyco K-Pack that I've talked to you about for years and years, I wasn't super into high-end hair care. I really was more concerned about how my scalp felt, how the product felt in my hair. I really dislike heavy, um, thick products in my hair. I would sacrifice hair color integrity for the way it makes my scalp or hair feel because I have found that many, at least drugstore, um, color protecting products just weigh down your hair and it just feels gross. So all that aside, that's your background info. Um, I got a couple things I want to talk to you about them. I haven't used all of them. Some of them I have dabbled in, but I'm not ready for any opinions yet. However, if you have used any of them or you would like me to talk to you about them after I've tried them out, leave me a comment down below, of course. These chatty videos are not only a chance for us to catch up, but also, you know, for you to let me know. So anything interesting that you see um, that you want to hear my thoughts on over on the blog or here in the video, and I can do that for you. So first thing I bought is the Kevin Murphy Do Over. Looks like this beautiful packaging, by the way, Kevin Murphy, like seriously, the aesthetic, great. Um, this is their dry powder finishing hairspray. So it's part uh, texturizer, it is part hairspray, it has a bit more grit and texture. I thought this would just be a cool product for the, cut, the kind of days where I want cool hair. Or if I want to put my hair up in updo, but I don't want that sleekness if I've just washed my hair. A lot of people had great things to say about the Kevin Murphy range. I have never used their products. This is the very first one. I bought it from Curlic um, in downtown Vancouver. If you're curious, they do carry a good selection of Kevin Murphy products, but as well as a lot of other salons in town. So that's the first thing I got. Then I was in touch with um, the people over at Carastas as well as Shu Uemura. 
Kerastase is a brand I've tried once or twice and I was at one of their events where they did a hair treatment um, and the products did feel great but I think the particular range that they were promoting at the time was a little too heavy for my hair but either way I've got some hair styling products um, courtesy of Kerastase and I haven't used them yet but I heard they're really good. The first one I have is the VIP Volume in Powder um, Back Comb Effect Finishing Spray. Now this is something I had asked for because I saw Lisa Lisa D1 talk about it and she recently just went on an entire Kerastase overhaul and you know the shampoo, the styling products, everything and she really liked this product and this was recommended to her by someone else that she had seen on YouTube. But essentially this is similar to the Kevin Murphy I just showed you. It is a volumizing, texturizing product that is has a little bit of that dry shampoo um, texture, but not necessarily oil absorbing. However, um, I have heard people say that when they use this, they, their hairstyle can last for like days and days, which I'm all about because I don't love washing and doing my hair. I feel like it's a bit of a hassle. I'm not great at it. It takes a long time, especially with longer hair. However, this sounded interesting. I hope it's awesome. Um, it comes in a strong hold formula and looks like this purple bottle. Next up, also in a purple bottle, they sent me the Kerastase Lac Couture Fixing Medium um, Hairspray. This is maximum hold, which seems a little strong here, but we'll see. You know, when brands say soft hold or light hold, medium, maximum hold, I think there's variance between um, the language among the different brands. So a medium hold in one brand might be a strong hold in another brand. I mean, you never know. So this is again the Kerastase um, Fixing Hairspray. And you know that I've always talked about the L'Oreal... Um, Oh gosh, what is it called now? The L'Oreal Onet Satin Hairspray. That is my holy grail as of now, but who knows? This might change my mind. Again, from Kerastas. Next up, also another kind of styling and protecting product that just sounded really cool. And I am pretty sure I will not be able to pronounce this properly. But again, I will link everything down below in the information bar for you. This is there. Um, I guess, Miracle Reshapable Heat styling lotion so essentially you put this in damp hair you style your hair and then you can restyle it without adding more product i'm not quite sure how this works but it's something like a moldable changeable hair styling product that you can keep re-editing your style throughout the days not sure not a lot of information on this i believe this is this could be relatively new if you've used or are a fan of Kerastas and you know a lot about this, please let me know in the comments. Okay, moving on to Shu Umura. They also have a hair care range. They are carried on Sephora's website as well as in Sephora and wherever else that sells um, Shu The Art of Hair, you know, Shu Umura's hair range. I have this, the Color Luster products. I have three of them. I have the shampoo, which is currently in the shower because I used it the other day. Um, I have here the dry cleaner for color treated hair dry shampoo. Always good to know that they formulate dry shampoo for your hair, although I'm not sure if this is tinted. It may or may not be. I have to use it to figure it out. There is also this really cool product called the Shades Reviving Balm. And it comes in um, formulations and tones for different hair colors. They sent me the one for Venetian Blonde, which is a golden blonde. It might be a bit too warm for the hair color that I got done um, since I got beige tones. So I may or may not try this one. I'm still thinking about it. But I like the idea that they have very specific um, conditioning, color reviving shades for different hair colors depending on what you have done. So that is the color reviving balm. I also had sent the thermal milk for color treated hair. So I've used the the um, shampoo once, once or twice, and I did find it quite light, which is good. That's a good sign since I find a lot of other, um, especially drugstore priced color formulated products to be really heavy in my hair. But I'll give you an update um, once I've used them all a bit more. So the shoe and the Kerastase. All right, keeping on with the hair stuff. I recently purchased the Sephora Travel Hair Dryer. This is not a toy. 
This is the actual hair dryer. It comes in two, um, I guess, heat or intensity settings. It is dual voltage for travel. There is no cool shop button, but it comes with a mini diffuser that goes on here, as well as a mini, I guess, precision nozzle like the one you find in the larger hair dryers. And this only ran me about 33 bucks Canadian, which I thought was a steal. I was so tired of my super heavy Conair Infinity, whatever it's called, giant hair dryer. It made me really dread styling my hair because it was a hassle. It was a process, not something I look forward to. So I was really excited to get this um, from Sephora. It's not carried in any of the stores near me, so I did have to order online. So quick thoughts. Does it give off good heat? Good enough. Is it as strong as a full-size uh, professional dryer? Obviously not. Is it travel friendly? Of course. Um, I do think I will, and I and I am looking at um, still getting a higher end hair dryer because I find, although this gives off a good amount of air and it's quite hot, um, the nozzle and the air stream is too narrow. So I'm trying to style my hair with the heat. It's just not enough coverage from such a small dryer. And that's not the fault of the product. It's just a really small dryer. It's great for drying your hair. It does a good job at that. I have no kind of bad things to say about it for what it's supposed to do, but I think I needed something a bit beefier, though still lightweight. So here's my question to you. I am looking at the GHD Copper Lux Travel Dryer. Now insert picture right up here, as well as the Dry Bar Baby Buttercup or Mini Buttercup Travel Hair Dryer. Let me know if you own or have seen or have tried or whatever, either of those and which one would you recommend? The price point is about the same for both of them. I think there's a $20 price difference, which by the time you spend over a hundred on a hair dryer, I think is a little bit negligible. So I was looking at both of them, but I couldn't decide which one I should go for. I am still going to keep this. I think this is a great travel item, but um, I feel like I will still invest in a higher end hair dryer. And again, for the first time in my life, so I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for or which one is better. So please let me know if you have thoughts on that. Moving on in our conversation, by the way, I had to um, cut and restart a new clip in case I went over the time limit on my camcorder. And of course, as you know, these weekly chatty updates are not really timed. I'm not trying to make it small and short and sweet like I usually do. This is just a chat for us to get um, caught up and you know, things like that. So I'm not too concerned about how long the video is. I've got some more things on my list I want to talk to you about. I do make a list just so I remember all of my stuff. So I think it is time now to talk about this. Um, I recently made a post all about my new hosiery collection. And hosiery is probably the nicer way to put it. Essentially, I bought a bunch of knee highs and pantyhose and things like that, um, which has never really excited me. I was never a super you know, into the pattern tights and things like that. I'll have, I always keep a couple pairs of black tights um, for the winter time, but all this sheer stuff just felt really, I felt like I had to be very dressed up to wear, you know, stockings um, or pose or any of that nude, those nude ones just seemed really grown up and too mature for me. And I was never sure where I fit in or how they fit into my life. And I really refused wearing them for a very, very, very long time. But like I mentioned in that blog post, if you've read it, um, I was really sick and tired of getting blisters when I wear my pumps. Um, just being not quite super comfortable for long periods of time if you're going bare feet in your heels, which sometimes I do and I, and I have done for a long time. But I thought it was finally time to invest in a good basic collection of kind of pantyhose and stockings and hosiery and things like that. So I got um, a big order from Marks and Spencer. Is that what they're called? Marks and Spencer? I think so. The UK shop. And you can order online, either free shipping over $50, which was great. And I went to town because they had a beautiful curated selection of basics and all kinds of um, thicknesses or deniers and, um, you know, different brands that they carry. So I got some nude ones. I got some um, kind of full length ones. I've got some knee highs for wearing with pants. 
I've got like gray, I've got black and new, just the basic colors and I've got them in different thicknesses. I'm really excited to start wearing them with my outfits, especially when I think about, you know, a lot of my wardrobe now, I am making a lot more vintage or vintage inspired pieces and I feel like they would go better together with some hosiery. So that's what I've got in here. Pretty psyched about these, especially since I dropped a bit of money for them. Um, but very happy with them, delivered super quickly actually, and um, seems to be great quality. So win, win, and win. Oh, FYI, also bought some of these little, what are they called, socklets? Like super low cut um, socks for wearing with your loafers and some of your running shoes. I have a pair of Nikes that are kind of cut in a weird fashion and these are just great. So I'm super happy to grow my sock and hosiery collection. If you have recommendations for a certain brand that you love, I know Hue is very popular um, for stockings and things like that, let me know. And let me know if you think that there's a difference between inexpensive um, hose and more expensive hose like Wolford and brands like that. Drop me a comment if you're into that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's that out of the way. Next, let's talk about, I guess, a quick update before I show you some new things. Quick update on the quilt that I've been working on since I mentioned the quilt in my previous weeklies a couple of weeks ago. So there has been progress on the quilt, but it's not finished. Nowhere near finished. What I have done, let me try to put this in the right way up, is I have pieced together the um, sleeping animal panel which is the, the main reason I started making this quilt with the um, neutral backing fabric. So this fabric, you see the green one, is super cheap, $3 a meter. I bought a dress so it's, hun it's I think 90 something percent cotton with a tiny bit of stretch or it could be full cotton, I'm not sure. But there is a teensy weensy bit of stretch and I felt the colors um, complemented the colors on the animal panel here. So what I've done so far is I've taken this middle panel as the centerpiece and I've surrounded it with the um, cheaper fabric around that and the back is of course completely that same fabric from Dress Sew. And I have sewn um, all around the border so it's kind of attached but now I have to go in and do a lot of detail work um, with hand stitching and that's just going to take a while. I keep doing them a little bit, you know, once in a while when I do get a chance. It just takes time. I'm planning to do some of the animals and just go over and around the motifs with some hand stitching and then we'll do um, quilting patterns all throughout the rest of this. But it's kind of coming together. I've got um, safety pins all around because I heard that was the best way to keep your quilt sandwiched together. Your top piece, your middle batting, and your back piece. So. Still a lot of work to be done, a lot of hand work before I can wrap this up, but kind of a progress update. We'll get through it sometime, I'm sure. Okay, now this out of the way. Next then, let's keep talking about some fabric. I was at Ikea today for something that I will show you in a minute, but I love, 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 love this fabric. It is canvas. It's part of the IKEA, I guess, limited edition prints that they do. You know, sometimes throughout the season, they'll bring in a complete collection with a certain print and they'll do a couple of items in that print and they'll usually sell the fabric in that colorway. And I am so in love with this color and this pattern. If you notice that pillow over there, right here, is um, from the same collection and I mean, Come on, how fun is this? I am not going to use this for any type of homeware or postering or anything like that since um, that's just not how it works in my life right now. But I am considering just keeping this for now because I know it's limited edition. I might eventually use it for something or, or I might use it for a skirt. I've seen a couple of people use the canvas fabric from Ikea to make um, simple pencil skirts or whatnot because the prints are just so beautiful. So this is a great print. I also bought today another print in this brush stroke. It is also canvas, but it's not super heavy duty canvas. It's, it's good canvas and sturdy canvas, but I think it can still work as um, fabric for garments, for a skirt especially, probably not for a dress though. I just think it's so, so pretty kind of a watercolor effect. Really psyched about that. 
But the most exciting thing uh, that you should know about is I finally bought ooh, a rug. Now, why a rug, you might ask? Because many of you have throughout the years asked me um, about doing a few more fashion videos, especially since I Instagram about that a lot and since I sew now. And I often talk about, you know, my clothing pieces, building my wardrobe and whatnot. And I've always wanted to be able to show you more. But the situation is that I've got carpet in the place I like to film with the blank wall. That's the only space with the good lighting, the window lighting, and the blank wall. But I've got carpet and I really don't want to wear my outside shoes on the carpet. That's just not happening. So for the longest time, I couldn't show you a full body shot because, well, I've got no shoes on. It's kind of odd. So that made it challenging if I want to take photos indoors, if I want to take photos outdoors, I need to find a person, set up the tripod, it's just too much work. I prefer to be indoors in a space with a blank wall and good natural lighting and that was all I was asking for. But I couldn't get around the carpet situation and the shoes. Then I was talking to a friend of mine and she was like, dude, just get a rug. And ding, light bulb, right? So I got a rug. So happy with this. I think it's large enough that I can um, stand on and model any of my the clothes I show you in videos and be able to show you a full length body shot because shoes matter too and I really like shoes. I want to be able to show you all my shoes with the outfits. So I got this and I'm thinking this can just stay wherever and I wouldn't have to worry about you know the shoes on the carpet. I'll just put the rug down and whatever shoes I'm wearing, I can just wear on top of the rug no big deal. This is a low pile rug from Ikea. It costs about $15 Canadian. I thought quite affordable and definitely affordable based on what I'm going to use it for. Super psyched for that. Speaking of which, um, in my last uh, live stream, I asked some of you um, while I was talking about my clothes, if you wanted to see more fashion videos and many of you said in particular, you wanted more fashion video geared towards petite. Since I am only 5'2", so falling in the petite range, and I know shopping for clothes is a big hassle, especially bottoms, pants, skirts, dresses, things like that, that has a length issue, and things just often don't fit. Um, if I recall correctly, a lot of you want to see how to put outfits together for someone who is petite, um, which stores to shop for, any particular kind of go-to outfits or combinations that I like to wear. So now that I have the rug and I can actually do more um, fashion related videos or posts with a full length view, let me know what you would like to see and what you're interested in seeing on top of what I normally do, which is show you the garments I've hand sewn and I've made um, and things like that. So excited for the rug. Okay, last thing I want to mention um, is I have been thinking about investing in some good quality or slightly higher quality jewelry pieces and I want your thoughts and opinions on this. So I was looking between two things um, for my kind of next more investment-ish purchase and I mean when I say investment in my perspective, not going to spend thousands of dollars on it but you know a hundred or two hundred couple hundred dollars and I was thinking between either getting another fossil watch in the metal um, band and in the either the deep smoky purple or the rose gold, I will insert pictures up here. I currently, as an everyday watch, wear the Jaclyn face by Fossil with a leather band, more casual, and I love it. I really love the dial, I love the face, I love the size, everything perfect, it's real classic. I have also seen it in the metal variation and I kind of was thinking if that's a good addition to have in my collection. I wonder how many of you wear metal band watches and how many of you wear just the leather strap. So I currently only have the leather strap and I think I might want to invest in a metal band watch. So let me know your thoughts on that. So it's either the Jaclyn by Fossil or I was thinking of getting my first set of pearls. Um, I love pearls. They are you know that vintage aesthetic and I just love the way that they look overall but I'm very particular about how I like my pearls and yada 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 but that's for a different story. Um, I've been eyeing the Nouveau Pearls from Elle Florence. If you watch her, she's also from Vancouver. She makes videos. I'll link her down below for you as well as her site. Um, she handmade these pearls and she's a real classy type of girl. She has that classy aesthetic um, and she wears pearls all the time. So she started a line called Nouveau Pearl and she does these handmade pieces 
But the cool thing is the pearl necklace is a two-in-one. So there's an extender piece which can make the necklace longer and you can wear them together or you can take off the extender section and wear that as a bracelet and then wear the necklace, pearl necklace as a shorter piece. So it's kind of a set. Um, price is about the same between the fossil watch and the nouveau pearls. If I get the nouveau pearls, I think I'll get them in the dove gray or the smoky gray. So I've been debating what is the best um, investment piece, shall I say, fossil watch or new pearls. So look at both, let me know, and leave me your thoughts down below in the comment section. So I think this wraps up our video for today. Love to chat with you down in the comments. Looking forward to all of your thoughts. I hope you had a wonderful week. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.